Come on, stand with me. Give the Lord a clap offering today. Amen. Am I the only one excited about being here? Is there anybody else? Come on, give God a shout. Father, we love you. We lift up the name of Jesus. We want to glorify him today. Anoint us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, give him a clap offering and say amen. Let's go.
Hallelujah. Do you love him, church? Come on, here we go. Get a 
Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done.
you're my world. You're the air that I breathe. You're the songs that I sing. My Father, I love you. You're everything, Lord. My all in all, yes, you are. He's here. My Father, I adore you more. just want you and Jesus my beloved Savior everything I have I owe to you I owe it all to
gifts from you. I pray I'd use them as you want me to. I'd use them for you.
Search us this morning, Father. Search us through, Lord.
Every head bow, please. The words of that song just express what God is saying. At the cross I bow my knees where your blood was shed for me. There is no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. Savior, he can move the mountains. God is mighty to save. Father, in Jesus' name, anoint this altar call, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Convict sinners, convict backsliders, convict Christians of sin. I don't know who's crossed that line, but God, touch them right now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus is a Savior today. There is absolutely no sin that the blood of Jesus did not make provision for you. Jesus not only loves us, he saved us. Paid the complete price for your salvation. You do not have to go to hell. Hell is not a, a bad day here on planet Earth. Hell is a real place. It is in the middle of the earth. It burns 24 hours. People are screaming down there. The Bible tells us that hell was made for the devil and his angels. And so it was not made for you. But unless you are covered with the blood of Jesus, unless you repent of your sins, when you die, that's where you're going to go. That's the gospel truth. But Jesus loved this world so much that he came and gave his only begotten the Father gave His only Son to shed His blood so that you and I can enjoy eternal life in heaven. My friend, you have an appointment with death itself. You really do. It could be sooner than later. Just this month alone, six bicycle riders in the last two months have been hit by SUVs, cars, Just a week and a half ago, 41-year-old <clears throat> dad was playing basketball with his father, with his, with his eight-year-old daughter, and got shot down. When he left the house that morning, he did not plan on dying. 
Nobody plans to die, but you can die now, immediately. 30-year-olds are getting heart attacks. Say, why you sound so gruesome for them? Because some of you are going to hell, that's why. And I've got to tell you how much God loves you. And there's only one escape from hell, and that is the precious blood of Jesus. How do you get to heaven? You realize that all of us have sinned. What is sin? Sin is living your own way and violating God's law. The Bible says all have sinned. That means you and me. Secondly, you need to realize you cannot earn your way to heaven. The Bible says, where shall a man cleanse his own way? A man can't cleanse his own way. Thirdly, you need to realize that one day, you might die sooner than what you think. It is appointed for man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Fourthly, we need to realize that religion cannot save you. No man can forgive you. No priest can atone for your sin. Only the precious blood of Jesus. And then we need to repent of our sins. We can actually tell God himself, I am sorry, I want to turn from my ways. And I want to do my best to serve you. And then we have to personally receive Jesus. You'll not go to heaven because your father and your mother are Christians. You need to do that on your own. So every head bowed now, please. I speak an anointing over this church. I bind every demon power right now. You will have no authority in this dome in the name of Jesus or on this campus. I loose every soul right now to be free to respond to this altar call. I rebuke religious demons. I come against the spirits of fear and tradition and hard-heartedness. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I command right now the angels of God to come in this place and touch people's shoulders right now. Tell them this is for you. You need to wake up. Father, I call forth backsliders, atheists, people intending to take their lives. I call them forth to salvation right now in the name of Jesus before it's too late. I call forth fornicators, people having sex and they don't have a marriage ring on, adulterers, people getting stoned on alcohol and drugs. Father, your word tells us that they who practice these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But thank God for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your great compassion. Move upon this church right now. He's moving right now with that compassion. My friend, I don't care what you've done. There's probably a person here thinking, I've committed the unpardonable sin, I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. No, you haven't. That's why you're still here. That's a lie of the devil. While every head is bowed, if you would tell me, Dave Garcia, if I died right now, I am 1,000% sure that I am covered in the blood of Jesus, that I'm saved, I'm born again. I'm not perfect, but I know I'm going to heaven. I've sinned every now and then, but I, I know I'm saved. If that's not you, and you are not 1,000% sure that you're saved, keep your hand down. But if you would tell me, you know, I witness with my heart, I'm born again, not on my own merit, but by the grace of God. And lift up your hand up high. I am 1,000% sure. Ain't no doubt in my life. If you're not 1,000% sure, put that hand down. Thank you. You may put your hands down. Thank you. Father God, everything is done on earth by the witness of two or three there's been a witness of people saying I'm saved. There's also been a witness of people saying, I honestly don't know. Would you save people right now? If you didn't lift up your hand, lift up your head and look up at me right now. Don't leave those doors on your way to hell. Today could be your last day. Dave, are you trying to scare me? Yes. 
I'm trying to put the fear of God in you as well as the love of God. Because hell is real and there is no second chance. There is no purgatory. It's not in the word. And so if you didn't lift up your hand, lift up your face, please, and look up at me. I want to pray for you. I want to help you to repent of your sins and ask Christ to forgive you. So all of you that would say, I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to really get my life right with God. I didn't lift up my hand before, but I'm lifting it up right now. In Jesus' name, lift up those hands up right now. Let me see your hands. God bless you. Who else? God bless you in the back. Who else? Come on. God bless you. All right. Who else? God bless you. God bless you. Let me see your hands. God bless you. Anybody up here in the front? All of you lifting up your hands, do me a favor. Stand to your feet. Come walk over here. Meet me right down over here. Come. Come right now. Please come. Father, touch people right now who are backslidden, who are lost even in church, and save their souls in the name of Jesus. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. My friend, God's telling you to come up here. Stand to your feet. This is the day to get it right with God. This is the day to get it right with God. Anybody else? Come. Come right now. God is just stopping the service in time for you. We're going to have communion in a few moments. Communion will not save you. Only Jesus saves you. Please come right now. This is the day to get your life right. God bless you both. Bless you. God bless you. More people are coming. Father God, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit, your presence, bring people here. Move strongly in this place. Today, I'm getting my life right with God. Today is my day. So good to see you. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to be an evangelist with Dave Garcia. I want you just, 84% of people that come to God come because somebody asked them. And if somebody asks you, and you, please, if you, are you 1,000% sure that when you die, you're going to heaven? I want you to give them the answer. If they tell you, I don't know, then invite them to come join you. If they tell you, I don't plan on dying, you tell them, neither do I. But you can die before you hit the back. Seriously, you might be the one asking and you ain't even sure. So if you ask somebody and you're not sure, ask that person to come up with you. Turn around and ask somebody right now. Are you 1,000% sure that when you die, talking 1,000%, there ain't no 10%. You're not sure? Bring them up here right now in Jesus' name. By the own admission of your heart, you said, I'm not sure. Bring them up here right now. Holy Spirit, Touch people right now and bring them up here in the name of Jesus. Come. Come to the Lord. Come. Come, friend. Come to him. Come right now. Come right now. Who else is not sure? Who else is not sure? Let me tell you something. There's an anointing. When your pastor asks you to turn around, turn around and ask somebody. Don't sit there in rebellion. Turn around and ask somebody. Somebody can go to hell because you didn't do what I asked you to. In this church, I'm the authority. And, and, and I normally don't do this, but there are people who are not saved right now. And I just want to give them the opportunity. Amen? Because I'm tired of the next funeral. I really am. I've done hundreds of funerals. And so I'm going to ask you one more time publicly. You don't need to turn around. If there is somebody here and you're not sure of your salvation, please understand how much Jesus loves you, shed his blood for you. It is not too late for you. It is not too late for you. I want to say that again. It is not too late for you. God can forgive you and change your life right now. 
So if I'm speaking to you, stand to your feet in Jesus' name and make your way up here. Come. Thank you for coming. Amen. I'm going to pray for you like if my life depended on it because your life depends on it. The Bible tells us with the heart we believe. You wouldn't be up here if you didn't believe. But with the mouth, we open the door. You know, if I, if I rang your bell and you say, who is it? I say, Ms. Dave Garcia. Oh, you can come in. That's what, that's what we do to Jesus. It's as simple as that. But you got to want that with all your heart. So pray with I'm going to provide the words to a prayer. You provide the honesty and sincerity. Okay? I'm just going to stop right now. There's other people. There's, there's more people. Where are you? Over here? Come. <clears throat> Anybody else want to be included in this prayer? Please come. Please come at this time. You want to be included in this prayer. You wish you had said, man, I wish I had gone up here. Here's your chance. Come on up here right now. And we'll pray for you, okay? Anybody else? I want to get my life right with God. This is my day. I don't want to go to hell. I, I, I'm tired of being messed up by the enemy. Is there anybody else? Okay? We're going to pray now, all right? And you pray with me with all your heart. Pray this prayer. I'm going to provide the words. You provide the honesty, all right? Jesus, thank you for loving me. You are the Son of God. And you love me enough to die for me on the cross. When you shed your blood, that blood has power to forgive me and to wash away my sins. Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I repent. I want to turn around from this life that I depend on me. I want to depend on you for all my decisions. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me completely right now. You not only died, you are alive. You resurrected on the third day. You needed to resurrect. Because sin caused death. You never sinned. So you didn't have to die. But when you came back from the dead, you proved that you're stronger than death and you're stronger than sin. So forgive me of mine. Jesus, because you live, come and live in my heart now. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Receive me now as your child. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for forgiving me. All of my sin. I'm saved now. My name is written in the book of life in heaven. I want to stay faithful to you now. In the same way you forgive me, I forgive every person who has ever hurt me, used me, or abused me. I release them. Release me now to understand the Bible. It is the word of life. I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. Do me a favor. That's Scott and Miriam. Go over there. Go with them, all right? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Come on, stand with me and give God the praise and the thanks. Amen? Can we thank God? You may be seated. As the communion team prepares to pass out the elements today, I want to read a passage from 1 Corinthians 11. Paul is writing, and after giving instructions, he says in verse 23, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces, and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in, to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Verse 27, so anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread, drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. Verse 30, that is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves, we wouldn't be judged by God in this way. I want to share with you some themes that we see in this, in this passage. But I have to, first of all, share with you that when Paul is writing this, he is saying this in the context of divisions and contentions in the home where there was some ingenuous activities and discrimination taking place between the wealthy Christians and the poor Christians. And many times communion was becoming more of a uh, so commonplace because it was done so frequently that people were in a hurry and they were drinking and eating as if they were taking all of the elements and not allowing the others to get an opportunity. And Paul was saying, this shames the Lord. This shames the whole idea of communion. A couple of months ago, I heard the story of a dog who was given communion in, in a service in church. When we become so complacent with the whole idea of what we do when we make this declaration of worship, it dishonors God. And the first theme I want to share with you is that of honor. Because when we partake of communion, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. It means taking time on a daily basis to reflect on how you were and how lost you would be if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God. If God said I was going to give you a new house or give you $10,000 in the bank only to let you know that at the end of life you would be going to hell, what good would that be? The Bible tells us that in the morning it's a good thing to praise God for his loving kindness. In, e in the evening time we should praise him for his faithfulness. At midnight we should praise him for his righteous judgment. In fact, everything we do or say should be for God's glory. But in the early church, you've got to understand that there was so much persecution, so much hard times that it wasn't a monthly time of communion. People were taking communion weekly and daily privately and publicly in their homes, wherever they would meet. And they were honoring the Lord. The word think and thank come from the same root, two verbs that are connected. It is impossible to continually think about God without having thankfulness in your spirit. Like the song says, when I think about the Lord and I think about his goodness, I can't help but say hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's another reason why it's important to remember because in Deuteronomy 6, it says in the future, your children are going to ask you. And I'm telling you, your sons and daughters are going to ask you from time to time, why do you pray? Why do you take time to seek God? And, and why do you take communion? The Israelites were told to say this, you must tell your children, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. And just as the Israelites were to observe the Passover as a testimony of their children, we're also testifying to our children today. Listen, my son, my daughter, the reason why we take communion in our home and church was because I was once a slave to sin and in captivity to the devil. But one day the Lord brought me out of a horrible pit and he sobered me up and he put my feet on a firm foundation. So we are to remember Jesus in communion but also not just for our children, but it's a testimony to our enemies. All of you have an enemy. There may be enemies in your home. There may be enemies on the outside. But every time you take the cup, like David, you're declaring in Psalm 23, 
Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For because you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Therefore, I'm totally secure because I'm being fed at the table of Jesus. The second theme is the theme of humility. Your humility will attract communion with Jesus. Paul says, I'm handing this down what I have received. Not only does Jesus share with them a Passover meal, but he declares, I'm the fulfillment of that Passover event. And he not only fulfills it, but he transcends it. But we see Jesus leading his disciples with humility. It's important to understand the third theme, and that is that of holiness. Because Passover coincided with the Feast of Unleavened Bread the, the very next day. And they were told, I want you to eat unleavened bread for seven days. In other words, I want you to take some time, examine yourself, and really see if you're living a pure life because Jesus is the only pure representation of bread. And when we eat Jesus' bread, we're, we're saying, I'm participating in your purity. I'm participating in your holiness. And what that means is he's saying, I have, I have had an urgency to eat this meal with you. In other words, I've had an urgency to put my purity in your life and in your home. So communion brings an urgency to live a pure life. It brings an urgency to destroy and get rid of everything in your house that doesn't glorify God. The fourth thing, the theme that we see is the theme of healing. Because if it is true that dishonoring God and dishonoring communion brings judgment, and even judgment on our physical bodies, and that's the reason why some people have died premature deaths, then we must say that the opposite is also true. That if we do honor him in communion, that that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead on the feast of first fruits, that same spirit shall also quicken our mortal bodies. And these times of communion, even right now, are divine moments where you have need of healing. And when you're taking the pure bread, the pure word, and you're taking the blood, you can receive your healing right at that moment. Finally, the theme I want to share with you is that of harvest. It began 